Hi, I'm Marshall Lehman and I'm a Knox County Master Gardener. And today I'm back at the home of another Master Gardener, John Payne, to prune a rhododendron. Turns out John has multiple rhododendrons. He's got this great cluster over here to my left, which is actually four bushes. And we chose not to prune those because you can't really tell where one bush ends and another bush starts. This specimen is in slightly a bit more shade and as a result didn't bloom quite as early. So we're back now today. You can see the blooms are starting to fade. So we're back to prune this. Now, rhododendrons and azaleas are in the same family and as a result, neither of them really needs a lot of pruning. The thing you want to pay attention to are the four Ds, the dead, diseased, damaged, or dysfunctional. And again, because John has these in a garden bed, there's nothing dysfunctional on here. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is the dead, diseased, or damaged. And when we were scouting earlier, we did in fact find that there are some dead branches in here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is what I usually do, and that is to get down on my knees and crawl around inside the, the shrub. And I'm not going to record all that, just know that that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I have with me today my hand pruners, which will be the bulk of what I use on the outside here. And not knowing exactly how big the stuff is that I might find inside this dead, I have my long handled loppers. If it's a tight space, a pair of short handled loppers. And a just in case, if there's something really big, I have my folding saw. So with that, I'm going to pause and then I'm going to go inside the shrub and maybe I can show you a before and after still photo, but you really don't want to spend your time watching me crawl around inside a shrub pruning stuff when you can't see me. Okay, so I've just spent probably 15 minutes crawling around inside here, taking off the dead wood. And when it's small, it's like all the other pruning videos we did. If you just press on it with your finger, it's going to snap off. If it's a little thicker than the diameter of a pencil, well, then you need to end up pruning it off. But it's now been substantially cleaned out. Could probably do a little bit more. But the, the point with rhododendrons is they do not need a lot of pruning. If you take care of the four Ds, dead, which is what I was just focused on, damaged, that would be branches rubbing, diseased, they're not susceptible to a lot of disease, and dysfunctional, you know, if it's getting in the way of when you mow the lawn. That's the type of pruning you would be doing regularly. Now, John tells me that this plant is at least 20 years old. So we're really not going to do a lot of shaping on it. This is a classic rhododendron. Before we started, I got my tape measure out, and I can tell you that this rhododendron is taller than me. It measures about six feet tall and nearly 12 feet wide from side to side. And going deep is probably six to eight feet because it butts up against this, this tree. Doesn't quite wrap around it, but uh, does have a few branches going back the other side. So it's six feet tall, 12 feet wide, and six to eight feet deep. And at this stage, you are just pruning it to get rid of the 4Ds. Unless, you know, if something happens, say, during the winter, where a big limb falls down and smashes the side of the bush, well, then you're going to prune it to try and regain the shape. But that's another story. And if you look at the handout, um, for those folks who bought a house and there was already a rhododendron in the foundation bed, which is not a good place for a rhododendron because of their size, there is a, sh a little diagram in the handout that shows how you can do renovation pruning on a rhododendron, which will take it way back in size. Keep in mind, you will lose blossoms for at least one year, but you then will get several more years of growth before you'll have to really prune it back again. So, on the other hand, if you don't have a 20-year-old rhododendron, then I would encourage you, you wouldn't have to take off all of them, but I would encourage you to remove a lot of the blossoms once they start to fade because the next stage is the plant is going to put a lot of energy into creating seeds. And if you have a young rhododendron, you want it to put its energy into the vegetation, not making seed. So I'm going to insert a still image of a spent blossom. 
so that you can see the support mechanism, which is called a truss. So I'll pause here. We'll insert that picture of the truss. Okay, so you saw that structure, the truss that holds the blossom. If you've got a younger plant and you're trying to encourage vegetative growth rather than production of seed, you come in and you snip it right at the base of the truss. And then you are left with what is called a whorl, W-H-O-R-L, a whorl of leaves, okay? I'll do, a, I'll do a couple more here just so you can see this, but you come in, come to the base of the truss, snip off the truss, there's all those little support mechanisms, and a whirl of leaves. So I'll take a few more of the ones that are particularly spent. A lot of these are past their peak, but they're still pretty, so I'm not going to take all these off. But I've kind of cleared out in here. Now, if you needed to do pruning to shape it, just as when I took off the truss and the blossom, there's this whirl of leaves. If you needed to prune it to shape, well, then you're going to cut back to the next whirl of leaves. So I don't really want to take that one. Let's see if we've got a good candidate here. Many of these are just fine where they are, and I don't really want to take that off. But here's one I could do. I'm going to keep this stem over here, but here's a whorl, and I can take that off and come back. This is one year's growth. A little bit of stem and a, and a whorl. That's one year's growth. So you're not going to miss that in there. So, oh, here's, here is an excellent example. So here's a blossom, and I can remove the truss, and there's my whorl. There's my whorl, but if I wanted to prune it to shape, I would come back to the next whorl and trim it there, and that's one year's worth of growth. So that's the basics of pruning a rhododendron very much like the azaleas, which is not surprising because they're in the same family. Um, and if you keep after that cleaning up of the 4Ds, you really won't have to do a lot of shaping unless something else happens to your plant, or you inherited a house where the former owners planted it in the wrong place, in which case you may have a whole lot of work to do. So, thank you for joining us today. Hope you learned something. And to close out, I'll just show you the little pile of debris, which is mostly dead, or some very, very long woody stems, and then at the very end they, there's a whirl of leaves and maybe a blossom. Much of which was taken out of the middle so that we could get a little bit more air and sunshine into the center. So we'll take a still shot and show you. But again, thanks for joining us.